Hey guys, today we are going to talk about inferring. So when we infer, it's a lot like predicting and sometimes people mix those two up, but I need to tell you the difference between it. When you make a prediction, you make a guess about what might happen later in the story. When you infer, you're kind of reading between the lines like the video from vocabulary told you and you're trying to make an educated guess at what's going on that's maybe not being said. So, for example, if I walked in the classroom, you were here and you saw me, and I looked like this, my eyes were red and puffy, and I wasn't really talking much, and I went over and sat down, what could you infer? You would probably infer that I am sad, but I didn't go, hey guys, I'm sad. So how did you know that? You knew that because you inferred. Now let me tell you the two things that we add together, almost like a math problem, to get an inference. We take our background knowledge or our schema, stuff we already know. So we know that when we are sad, our eyes are puffy, we don't want to talk, we sometimes cry, and we know that from our background knowledge. So we took our background knowledge of what we know, and you took the clues and evidence. The clues and evidence were me being sad, my eyes being a little teary, my head being down, me not talking. Those are your clues and your evidence that you put together with your background knowledge of knowing. Well, when somebody looks like that, it means they're sad. Boom, you were able to infer, even though I never said it. In stories, that happens too. So a character might be stomping her feet and crossing her arms and walking away from her friend. We can infer that that character is mad, even if she never tells us she was mad. We may never know if our inference came true, but we can just know because we used our background knowledge, what we know, we know how people act when they're mad, and we use the clue, stomping feet, angry, crossed arms, huffing and puffing. So, you today are going to go watch a Pixar short, which is awesome. It goes with our Disney theme. Pixar shorts have no words. So you have to do lots of inferring to figure out what in the world is going on. You're going to watch one called Pigeon Impossible, and it is really funny and really fun to watch. Now, after you watch Pigeon Impossible, there is a document for you in Google Classroom in your Classwork tab called Infer Pigeon Impossible. Now, this is what is on that. It's got one, two, three, four, five questions there, and those five questions go along with the video, and they make you make inferences. So, what you'll do is, you'll tell me what your clues and evidence are, and what you infer. So, for example, the first question says, what is the profession, that means job, of the man? Now, it's never gonna go out and say, this man's a baseball coach, or this man's a doctor. You're gonna have to infer that. So, what job do you infer or think that this man has? Then you have to tell me how you knew. What were your clues and evidence? So just like with my example, if my example that I said earlier about a character in a story was, how did the little girl feel? Then you could say that you infer that she was mad because she stomped around and crossed her arms. But in this case, you're gonna be doing that same thing with questions about the video, Pigeon Impossible. Tomorrow, I will have a video for you where I actually go over what the right answers were here, and then you can actually know if what you inferred was true or not. So, remember that you can, after you watch the video and go to answer those questions, you should go back to the video and re-watch and pause so that you can use the clues and evidence to help you answer that. Let me know if you have any questions about this. I hope you have an awesome day, and I hope you enjoy inferring and watching these Pixar shorts.